in the montage. Get out of there. It's Late Night with David Letterman. Tonight, sportscaster Marv Albert, comedian Franklin Ajay, filmmaker Sam Arkoff, and five-year-old motorist Rocco Morabito. Plus, Paul Schaefer and the world's most dangerous band. And not... Yeah, you're in the montage again. What the hell is the matter with you? David Letterman! Folks, welcome to the uh, program, and it's it's Tuesday. We just finished up kind of a long weekend, and as I do from time to time, I want to share you uh, share with you my weekend activities. I first of all, I had a great time. Here's what I did: I consolidated my TV, my stereo, and my VCR all onto the same shelf, so that now legally, I have a home entertainment center. Yeah. Thank you very much. Legally now, I have a home entertainment center. Am, am I repeating myself? Here's to you. Thank no, you very much. Well, uh, I guess you, you can feel it. It's, uh, it's a palpable excitement, isn't it? You can, you can cut it yeah. with a knife. It's this, this summit meeting between uh, uh, Gorbachev and, and President Reagan and uh, kind of an interesting uh, sidebar. And by the way, this is the hand gesture for the term sidebar. <laughs> right there. Uh, in Washington today, uh, Mr. Gorbachev and his lovely wife, Raisa. Is it Raisa, Paul? I, I believe so, yes. Thank you. What did you say? Is it Raisa? Raisa? The San Francisco treat. Thank you very much. No. Uh, anyway, <laughs> uh, they, were, uh, they went to see a movie this afternoon. They went to see Fatal Attraction, and uh, I thought that was kind of a, a neat thing to do. But <laughs> it, it turned out that the whole thing was a mistake. They hadn't planned on going to see a movie at all. They thought they were waiting in line for bacon. But you know, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> wait a minute, wait a minute. I have a little something for you folks. There you go. Hope you enjoy that. I hope it's your size too, by the way. Thank Thanks for flying Eastern. Well, good night, everybody. Uh, have you seen, uh, uh, I've been doing a lot of my Christmas shopping, so I came uh, across uh, a Brute Cologne. Uh, they have a new advertising slogan, uh, to smell like a man. It smells like a man. Brute. Brute, it smells like a man. But you know, if that's really all you want to do, what, you don't need anything for that, do you? <laughs> uh, <laughs> see, because you could just, just stand in here, I smell like a man. And so why would you want something to apply onto the... Legally, it's a home entertainment center. <laughs> see this card because I don't think people will believe me if I just read it off the card. Hand it to me. Thanks, Kevin. <laughs> now, you hear me say it a million times that we have a great show. But look, look, see, tonight we do. Look at this is a solid show. Franklin Ajay right there. And of course, Sam Arkoff. Well, what, does, what does Sam do, you're saying? Well, look, right there. <laughs> These guest intro flashcards are a real boon to the talk show business, aren't they? Uh, also, Marv Albert. And uh, this is very cute. The kid, five years old from uh, here in the New York area, just, huh? Rye, New York, yeah, just up the road from us, uh, got in the family car and drove his sister downtown a couple of days ago. <laughs> <laughs> Rocco Morbito is with us. What a show, folks, here. Hello, hello, everyone. It's nice to see you all. Dave, I, uh, 
Something interesting is kind of happening over here. I didn't really plan it that way, but What's I'm, that, I'm Paul? trying to put together my own sort of rock and roll museum. Uh huh. Because we have so many guests on the show, and sometimes right. they leave things. This is that. These are Greg Almond's earplugs. Ooh. So uh, we can. Laugh, so that's my first addition to the uh, my own. We rock could auction and roll. those off for a pretty penny. Yeah. Probably well, want to boil them first, but boil them and distill them, and then kind of uh, dry them out, and you never know. Paul, how was uh, how was your big uh, benefit over the weekend? Did it turn that out nicely? That benefit at the Ritz for Jimmy Mail, it was it couldn't have been better. Total oh, good. sellout. Good. Uh, every uh, studio musician in town was there to support their friend Jimmy Malin, and uh, we raised some money. And uh, yeah, thanks for asking. Couldn't oh, good. I'm glad, I'm glad it worked show. out well. I had, I had a great weekend uh, myself, as you know. You my, my sisters were in town. Yes. Yeah. When uh, we spent uh, five or six lovely days together, and uh, nice. I haven't seen them in a long time, and they went to see Les Mis, Les Miserables. Oh yes. Yeah. Yeah, nice. With uh, now the original guy, who was the guy who was in the original cast? Huh? Yeah, Colin Wilkinson. Colm Wilkinson, yeah. and uh, he's left, I understand, and he, his place has been taken by one of the Oak Ridge boys. But I understand it's <laughs> still, still a lovely show. Is that true? Huh? One of the Oak Ridge boys? I think in, so. That's what my sister Miz said. Now. Yeah, that's right. Is it a part for a country and western? Uh... I don't know, but it's a show and they enjoyed it. My sisters were here. Did I mention that? Yeah. Where are they I, from? Uh, uh, one's sister. from Indiana, one's from Florida. The older one's from Indiana, the younger one's from Florida. Lovely women. They are. Lovely I women. Yeah, we had a wonderful day. time together. We spent some time together. I, of around. course, had to sleep in the yard, but we still... <laughs> what are we doing? Huh? Oh, that's right. We're tonight, ladies and gentlemen, in, in the truest spirit of Glasnost. Yeah. Am I right, Paul? Yeah. We are uh, going to place a call now to uh, Leningrad in, the, uh, in <laughs> Russia. And uh, we're going to uh, engage in a little uh, dialogue with a average Soviet citizen over there. And we'll yeah. do that. It, the operator is right there? Oh, okay. So, okay. Okay. Yeah, hello? Hello? Yes, is, is this the overseas operator? Yes, it is. Okay, hang, hang right on. I'll be right with you. What's your name? I'm operator 517. <laughs> oh, my God. It's too late. Run for your lives. Um, so, uh, we need, uh, of course, we need a translator because by the time we get connected to uh, Leningrad, we'll have to talk to somebody there. So, tonight we've uh, invited a, a young woman to be with us. Uh, she is, uh, uh, she was born in Moscow. She was actually raised in Moscow, <laughs> born and raised in Moscow, as it turns out, and now lives here in New York City as an interpreter. Well, she doesn't really live here as an interpreter. She lives here and works as an interpreter. <laughs> Please welcome Ina Gorbatov. Ina? Hi, Ina. Pleasure to meet you. Thank you for coming. Ina Gorbachev. Uh, now, Ina, how long have you lived in the United States? <coughs> uh, 13 years. 13 years, and you came over, uh, you immigrated to this country, yes. is that correct? Yes. And have you been back since? Never. Uh -huh. no. And you, you live in New York City? I do. And you're enjoying your life in this country? I love it. Well, congratulations for you. Now, are you terribly excited about uh, Mr. Gorbachev visiting? Oh, yes, I think it's a really important mm -hmm. event. Mm -hmm. Now, your name, your last name is quite similar to his. His is Gorbachev, yours is Gorbatov. Yes. Is, is, are these common names in Russia? Oh, yes, they are quite common, but I'm not uh, related to uh, Mr. Gorbachev no, no, at we all. Didn't, we didn't mean to suggest that you were. <laughs> Uh, so uh, what we're going to do, is, since the, uh, the premier, the number one guy, is here in the United States, that's all well and good. But we thought what we'd like to do is invite an average Soviet citizen to come as my guest to visit this country. Does that seem like a, a good idea to you? I think it's exciting. All, all right, so this will be uh, operator 0965517. Hello? Hello? Yes? Yes, sir. Could I have your name, please? We, we have the number now. We need the name. Hello? One moment, one moment. This is like ordering a pizza. This is not a long distance. Uh, y yes, hello? Yes, one moment, sir. Uh, who are you, ma'am? Hold on, I'm the international operator. Just oh, you're the international operator. Well, I think you're the one we need to talk to, aren't you? Hold on, sir, just uh, a moment. Ma'am, we're, we're doing a TV show here. We have a, a, a translator and everything. Hello? One moment, sir. See you. Yeah, I'd like to leave a wake-up call for about six, please. Uh, do, you, do you very often uh, call uh, Russia yourself? Either? Not anymore, but Not anymore. I used to. Is this standard procedure for placing a call like this? Unfortunately. Yeah. All right. Hello? Okay, so far, sir, we're unable to get Leningrad to answer, sir. Just a moment. Okay, well, ma'am, what is your name? Uh, my operator's number is 1911. 1911. Yeah, you sound like a 1911. <laughs> uh, well, it's an emergency. 
911. Oh, you're 911. Oh. Uh, 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 uh. One moment. Okay, sure. Did you have a nice Are weekend, Were you doing Tina? this live? Were you really doing this live? Hello, ma'am. Hello. Is this really live? Is what really live? Are you really doing this on a live show? Yes, we are, ma'am. <laughs> what, 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 what exactly did you think was... I know, well, you, you never know about these things. Well, <laughs> what, uh, okay, fine. Uh, so we can place the call as quickly as possible, then. It's hard to get through. Okay, one moment. Where are you Hello, right now? Leningrad. Yes. Hello? One moment. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> we pretty much have that yes, part of the procedure Pittsburgh now. Pittsburgh, United States. We need Leningrad number 542-9123. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Just throw it right through. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Do you, do you think they'd let you pull a stunt like that in the Soviet Union? No, no, no. no. <laughs> okay, now we're going to Leningrad. You ever been to Leningrad? Many times. It's a beautiful city. What we're going to do when we get to Leningrad, we're going to talk to somebody at the uh, Leningrad Hotel, or Hotel Leningrad, built in 1970. It has 15 stories, 746 rooms, uh, 1,312 total beds. There, right? They explain the significance of that, if you will, Lena. I don't really remember this hotel because I'm from Moscow, although I've been many times mm -hmm. in Leningrad. But mm -hmm. I think that the board that you see symbolizes the fact that Leningrad is situated on, uh, on the sea, it's a port. Mm -hmm. and what, what sea is that? Baltic. The Baltic Sea. Did you know that, Paul? It's on the Baltic Sea. That interesting. Leningrad, then. Yeah, Leningrad. Mm. <laughs> they have sauna and weight facilities at the uh, Hotel Leningrad. They have banquet facilities. Hello, operator. She said there's no answer. The operator in Leningrad said the hotel's not answering. Ah. No, 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 no. They must, they must, what are they? They're all down in the sauna and weight room, I guess, right? <laughs> uh, now, now tell them that we know that it's a hotel. What time is it there in uh, Leningrad now? Do you have any idea? I think it's about seven or eight hours difference. Seven or eight hours sure. difference of that? Right now it is 1.45 Wednesday morning there, a.m. Yeah, well, they wouldn't have closed the hotel. Can you try it again, operator? Okay. Thank you. What is your name? This is Operator 1911 in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Oh, my God. 1911 in Pittsburgh. Okay. Yes. We're the international office. Yeah. I knew a 1911 in Philadelphia. <laughs> did. Yeah. What's it's the been real. What's the weather there like in uh, Pittsburgh? Well, today has been a beautiful day. The weather's on the mild side. Sunny. Temperatures in the mid-50s today. All right. I'll tell you what. Why don't you, just as a practice, translate that? Oh, uh... What did you say? What, what did you say again, uh, uh, 1911? The temperature in Pittsburgh was in the mid 50s. All right. Uh -huh. Temperature was about 50 degrees Fahrenheit. Uh huh. 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 Can I talk? Uh huh. Can I talk to the uh, 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 Russian operator? Okay, she won't. Um, she won't answer right now. Can you hold on just a moment? Another operator will release me. Uh oh. oh. Okay. <laughs> because I'm going home, David. Have a nice evening. Now you got, you're going in the middle of this gig? Yeah, you have to go home, David. Now you're going to lie to Give me, lady. If you're laughing, you got a lot of show you're, going on. Now you can't, you can't give me like five more minutes? You got to blow now? Five more minutes, no. I have another colleague that's going to assist you, okay? Now who's that? Okay. What is your, what's your number? 251 is going to relieve me, Two, five, one. Okay. Okay, well, goodbye. It have a safe like trip home. Well, I see uh, this tonight on television. Yeah, okay, bye-bye. Okay, have right. a nice one, Okay, bye-bye. Now bye -bye. what do we do? We have to do a commercial. All right. Okay, so that we'll get this hello? mess. Yeah, hello, is this 251? Yes, it is. Oh, hi. How are you? Listen, we're, tr <laughs> we're trying to get a hold of the uh, Russian operator to call uh, Leningrad. Okay. Can you do that for us? Mm -hmm, hold on. All right. We'll, we'll be right back. All right? Okay. <laughs> Batteries can lose their freshness waiting to be bought. But only new Duracell battery packs have a freshness date that guarantees they're fresh. Freshness dating from Duracell. How's it going, mate? 
The hard work makes you mighty thirsty. Little nip of the smooth refresher. Ah, Matilda Bay cooler. Hey, Fuzzball, you missed a spot. Ah, that's really something. Yeah. Did you bring the hedge clippers? Oh, yeah. Matilda Bay is a different kind of cooler from a different kind of place. Now made by our mates in the States. It'll take your taste away from the everyday. Danny DeVito. I don't want to say on the phone. All I can tell you is that I killed her last night. And Billy Crystal. One little murder and I'm Jack the Ripper. Have a special holiday thought for you. I kill your wife, you kill my mama. That's fair. Throw mama from the train. Evan! This is Cousin Patty. You don't have a Cousin Patty. You lied to me. Rated PG-13. Starts Friday, December 11th at a theater near you. Look, a new message. C, come on over. A, alone. N, now. O, E, etc. Oh, canoe, canoe? The Cologne by Dana. Wear it. She'll get the message. Who can I turn to when nobody needs me? The Urban League helps make older people's lives worth living again. Please support us. We can make a world of difference. But who can I turn to if you turn away? Okay. <laughs> hello, hello. Yes, who am I speaking to? He hello? Hello? Yes, who is this? This is 251. 251 again. Yes, ma'am. How are we doing on that call to uh, Leningrad? Okay, well, the first number, there was no answer. Did you try the other number? Okay, the second number, she hung up, so I'm trying again. She hung up. What, what did she say just before she hung up? Uh, she, nothing. I've nothing. seen that show. Click. <laughs> are, there, are there television shows like this in the Soviet Union? Not exactly. Not exactly. <laughs> are there many funny shows in the Soviet Union? Some. Yeah. Dave, you want... Hello? She keeps hanging up. I'll try her again. Something about the tone of your voice, I'm guessing. <laughs> uh, could I speak to her? Yeah, you can speak to her. Uh, this is the Hotel Leningrad, eh? Hold on, okay. okay. She's ringing. She's ringing now, so this, get ready. Go ahead. Hello? Hello? Девушка, добрый вечер. Uh, I'm Dave Letterman. I'm in New York City. You're on the air. Я вас я перевожу то, что вам хочет сказать журналист Letterman. Letterman. И uh, вас слушают uh, американские... <laughs> вас слушают американские кино... кинозрители. Алло. Алло, алло. Девушка. She's still there? Yeah, I don't think... If they would turn off that damn Geiger counter... <laughs> She's still there. They still are there. Okay, well, keep going. Девушка, алло. Алло, это Нью-Йорк. Hello. Алло. Leningrad? Hello, Leningrad. Hold on, Dave, one moment. Okay. She gets to call me Dave, I have to call her 251. Dave. <laughs> yes, what is it? I don't it? know what she's doing. She's clicking her telephone. Uh -huh. Ask her to stop, ask her to stop that annoying clicking. No, you Hello, don't. Leningrad. Hello? I think, I think they're trying to get us off the line. Yeah, like I know. How <laughs> would I know that? Yeah, Dave, I don't think she I wants know. to try your call. Okay, I tell you what, uh, 251, here's what we were going to do. We were going to invite this person to come to the United States. We were going to pay for it. Mm -hmm. uh, but since we can't talk to her, and you're the only other person on the phone right now, I'm, I'm going to give you this wonderful prize. Oh, wow. I'm translate that. <laughs> Thanks, Dave. Here. Я хочу перевести для вас на русский язык все, что было сказано. Так как вы тот человек, с которым мы говорим, то, конечно, этот приз получите вы. We just wanted to get our money's worth out of the translator. Uh, okay, now, now give me your first name or you don't get this lovely gift. My first name? Yeah. It's Shelly. Shelly, good. Now listen, Shelly. 251. All right, Shelly, now here's the deal. We're going to fly you to New York City. Oh, you are? Yes, we are. Okay. And then I'm going to pick you up at the airport. When? Well, we'll make the arrangements when we get off the phone. When you get off the phone? Yeah, after the show, we'll talk to you about the arrangements. Okay. And, and then you'll be staying at the Berkshire Place Hotel 
okay. the heart of Midtown Manhattan. It's not just a hotel, it's Manhattan's green and civilized oasis. Okay. Then we'll be having dinner at the Cattleman Restaurant. It's a bit of the Old West in New York City. <laughs> and finally, Shelley, mm -hmm. it's a night on Broadway. Oh, wow. Yeah, we're going to go see I'm Not Rappaport with the original cast. Okay, Dave. Judge Hirsch and Cleavon Little. Wow, really nice. Are you coming or not? I'm coming. All right, we'll make all of the arrangements. Thank you so much for all your help. You're welcome. God's with Daniel. We'll be back here with uh, Rocco Morbito. <laughs> My grandfather had this big, rumbly kind of voice. <laughs> He'd push his chair back from the table and say to my grandmother, that, my dear, was a two-button Christmas dinner. <laughs> He'd laugh, and then he'd unbutton his vest. Two buttons. Then I got to climb up on his lap, and I'd whisper in his ear, I love you, Grandpa. <laughs> he always pretended that it tickled his ear. I wish they didn't live so far away. This Christmas, you'll find many ways to say I love you, Grandpa, at Hallmark, the place to go when you care enough to send the very best. Ritz Bits crackers. <laughs> many Ritzes, unbelievable. Three sizes. They're very, very tiny. Buttery. New Ritz Bits. Every bit as good as a Ritz. Unsafe. Behavior is unsafe behavior, and unprotected sex is unprotected sex, and they're, they're risky. They're both risky. Condoms are not 100% safe. Condoms can be most effective when they're used correctly, and there is a right way and a wrong way to using one. If you don't know, we find out how to use a condom. The fact is we do have choices. The final decision is up to the individual. For answers to your questions about AIDS, call 1-800-342-AIDS. You've probably heard about osteoporosis, how it causes bones to become weak and break easily as you get older, especially if you're a woman. And you may have heard about adding calcium to your diet, but did you know research shows there are other ways you can keep your bones strong? You can avoid smoking, heavy drinking, and get regular exercise. If you're over 45, talk to your doctor about other things you can do. Get the facts about osteoporosis in this free booklet from the Arthritis Foundation and call your local office today. So, uh, yeah, thank you. They, they were going to light the uh, Christmas tree outside the building tonight, but we've just been informed that they'll do it tomorrow night. Uh. <laughs> yeah, do it tomorrow night. A few days ago, our uh, first guest decided he wanted to go to the beach, uh, so he put his baby sister in the back seat of the family station wagon, backed the car out of the driveway, and hit the road. <laughs> Folks, please say hello to Rocco Morbito. <laughs> How are you? Have a seat. Nice to have you here, Rocco. You look great. You look good. You feel all right? You've had quite an experience, haven't you? <laughs> have you, uh, was this Friday morning this all happened when you took the car for a, a drive? Yeah. About Friday morning? Had you, had you ever driven a car before that time? No. No? Do you, do you have a little toy car that you operate? I have a big foot. A big, a big, I don't know what that is. It's a toy Bigfoot. Okay. Um, do you, you, you must like automobiles pretty well. Do you find them fun? Do you find them fascinating and interesting? Yeah. Yeah. So you just decided that you would drive. Right? Yeah. <laughs> you know, there could be a place for you, Rocco, at the phone company. Um, now, so you, you went out and you got into the car. What kind of car is it, Rocco? Station wagon. Station wagon. Late model station wagon? Ford, Chevy, Buick, something like that? It's all right. Whatever. What, it's a station wagon. So you got the keys. Now, where did you get the keys, Rocco? In my mommy's pocketbook on top of the refrigerator. <laughs> <laughs> on top of the refrigerator. 
Did you have to climb up on something to get those keys? You were just able to get them. Now, where was Mom? Sleeping on the bed. Mom was asleep. This was quite early in the morning, wasn't it? About 7 o'clock in the morning? Yeah. Yeah. So you and your little sister, you go out into the driveway and you get into the car. Now, did you know in your mind that you were going for a ride or were you just going to pretend you were going for a ride? Pretend. You were just going to pretend. <laughs> so you put the keys in the car and you started it up, right? Now, was that hard to do? No. Could, <laughs> could you reach the pedals? Yeah. Now, how did you know which pedals to work? Because I saw the pedals, but then I pushed the both pedals. Mm -hmm. And you figured out which one made the car go, which one made the car stop, right? Yeah. So now you pulled out of the driveway. Now, is your sister in the back at this point, or did she come out later? She was in the back. She was in the back. <laughs> so what, where did you think you were going, Rocco? My sister wanted to go to the beach. <laughs> <laughs> so I, mom's asleep, and you said, I'll take you. <laughs> All right, now, do you, do you, from your house, do you know, Rocco, how to get to the beach? Yeah. All right. So, so you pulled out, you, the car pulled out, and you're, are you in traffic? Were there other cars? You were, you were pretty much on your own then. Not a, not a lot of traffic. Yeah. How, how long did you go? Three miles. Three miles. Do you know how fast you were going? Pretty slowly? Yeah. Could you see over the steering wheel? Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then uh, the policeman stopped you. How did you know there was a policeman following you? I saw the lights in the mirror. <laughs> you saw the lights in the mirror. Now, did you know immediately what to do when you saw the police? Yeah. So what, what did you do then? I pulled over. <laughs> <laughs> You pulled over, and, and the policeman comes over to the side of the car. What does he say to you? <laughs> Did he ask to see your license? <laughs> was, was he surprised to see a little boy driving the car? No. Was, was he nice to you? Yeah. Yeah. And, and then he took you down to the police station? And what did they say to you there? My papa was there. Your father was there at that, that, that point? My grandfather. Your grandfather was there at that point. And uh, did they ask you where your mom was? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, did, did, uh, they didn't arrest you, did they? No. No. And they treated you pretty well? Yeah. Yeah. Well, now, what did you and your sister do when you were stopped by the police? <laughs> you, you, uh, were you surprised to see him? Uh, and, and Rocco, uh, have you learned anything from all of this? Yeah. What, what did you learn? I learned. <laughs> Well, it's, it's, uh, you learned that you probably should wait till you're a little older to drive again, don't you think? Okay. Do you think you'll be doing this anymore? Okay. Well, it was certainly nice to meet you. And I, I'm glad everything worked out all right. Okay? Yeah. Okay, Rocco. <laughs> nice to have you here. We'll, uh, we'll do this special have you here. We'll be right back. Have your contact lenses gotten so uncomfortable you feel like trashing them? Well, don't. Give them a bath in Optizyme Weekly, and they'll feel comfortable again. Optizyme from Alcon. We can help you love your lenses. Oh! Oh! There's good things in the middle of all the cereal. Oh! Oh! Oh, the taste. Oh. There's good things in the middle of all the cereal. Oh! Oh! Oh, the taste. Oh! Oh, those O's of Quaker Oats and Corn. 
filled with honey, graham, and other good things. Taste that bitter place. There's good things in the middle of all the cereal. Honey graham or crunchy nut from Quaker. Oh. Oh. oh what a taste. If I were to describe the taste of Dutch chocolate mint, I'd say it was... It's like mint chocolate chip ice cream melting in a coffee cup. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's an after-dinner mint, only hot. Go ahead, girl. Uh, I think it's like a candy cane dipped in Bosco. Yes. <laughs> it's mint and chocolate like I've never had it. Mm. Dutch chocolate mint, new from General Foods International Coffees. It's like when you eat a mint and your boyfriend eats chocolate and you kiss. <laughs> The game is a question of scruples. Your friend set you up with a blind date. He's not exactly what you had in mind. Do you go through with it? It depends. On what? On whether or not he sees me first. Hey, oh. looks aren't everything. Prove it. You married him, didn't you? Scruples, <laughs> it's a game and more. Love one another. As I have loved you. Care for each other. As I have cared for you. Bear one another's burdens. <laughs> Share each other's joys. Love one another. Love, Love one, one another. another. And bring each other home. Come together as a family. Come together to your house of worship every week. Worship together. Grow together. A message from Religion in American Life. St. Elsewhere falls after a highway to heaven. I'm in love. With Novino making headroom for romance. I'm a mess. And an Auslander super surprise. Then, it's a powerful new episode of Bronx Zoo. Well, vacation's over. We're back in the action now. With a shattering mistake that leads Ed Asner fighting for his life Wednesday. On the uh, program, Tom Wolf will be here, and also uh, comedian Rich Hall. That'll be tomorrow. Uh, and in this uh, half hour, uh, Sam Arkoff will be here, and uh, Franklin Ajay. So that's coming right up. Whenever the uh, New York Knicks score a basket, my next guest is there to tell you all about it, which I guess means he pretty much has a part-time job. <laughs> Please welcome the uh, voice of the Knicks and Rangers, the pride of NBC Sports, Mr. Sport himself, Marv Albert. Marv. things going very well incidentally Rocco reminds me of some of the guests that we've had on the baseball pregame show this past, uh, <laughs> well he's you know, only five nine. years old and all, and all of this is very jarring to the little yeah, fellow overwhelming and he's talking it up now in the green room oh he is <laughs> yeah. ah. um, Marv uh, you got another batch I'm guessing uh, the wild and the wacky Oh, Lord. Uh, so why don't we just get yes, right... this is the, the year Albert end. Achieve, oh, the year end. The year end well, we're, we're doubly back. proud. Yes, right. uh, 1987. A look back, as prepared as always, by our crack staff, Paul. I know. Yes. I don't know. Well, we call Shut it up. Year end. Albert, 
Achievement Award. The year-end Albert Achievement okay, Award. We can roll it right now, <laughs> and we, we open go. up with a very well-executed presentation by Harry Glickman, the president of the Portland Trailblazers. The all-time scoring record for the Portland Trailblazers was 9,702... Uh, 9,000... Well, this past year had its share of wild basketball shots. Julius Irving with the save and the fling, and it goes in. Diminutive Bullets rookie Tyrone Bogues firing from half court. Yes. Wow. And there was high school player Mark Bailey of Heath, Ohio, with an extraordinary over-the-head heave at the buzzer. <laughs> to the sport of hockey, Anton Stasny of Quebec on a breakaway for the empty net. Old Samuelson of Hartford tries all he can to no avail. <laughs> Gilbert Delorme of Detroit checked into the Edmonton Oiler bench, and they refused to let him get out. And how about Jay Miller of the Boston Bruins? Bit upset. Now watch this thing's just not working out well for Jay. <laughs> Moving on to baseball. Best attempts of 1987. One of the spectacular catchers of the year, Darryl Boston of the White Sox, flying into the stands and makes the catch. Met outfielders Mookie Wilson and Len Dykstra on a collision course. What you might call a heads-up play. Mookie able to hold on. And how about this bunt by Dan Gladden of Minnesota, Kevin Seitzer of Kansas City giving it a go, attempts to blow the ball into foul territory. Nice try. Here is Lloyd Mosby of the Blue Jays with a steal of second. Now the throw goes into center field. Mosby thought it was a fly ball to center, so goes back to first. Now the throw to first goes wild, so Mosby heads back to second. In effect, he stole second base, Dave, twice oh, on the same play. Amazing. On to embarrassing moments. Watch Lou Pinello of the Yankees losing the argument and his gum. How about this ground ball to Joey Cora of San Diego? Plays it with a neat underhand toss, not what he had in mind. Alan Trammell of Detroit, line drive. Toronto's Jesse Barfield with somewhat of a problem. One of the peculiar moments of the year, Roger McDowell of the Mets upset over this play in disgust, tried to pound the ball into his glove and nearly threw it away with runners on base. And here's Hubie Brooks of Montreal.